of our lesson on uh, from elective geography for class 9 uh, in the last class i had taught you about the meaning and concept of resources so today we will be uh, learning about classification of resources so and then we will finish this chapter so uh, to help you to understand how resources are classified i have drawn a very simple diagram which if you can follow will help you to understand it clearly so i have divided resources into uh, two groups one on the basis of its origin and another on the basis of its renewability and uh, in a very simple way and uh, there are many other classifications also but we will not go into all that for today we will concentrate only on this two so we know that resources are large in number and varied in quality so depending on that and depending on as i have uh, uh, put here the origin where we get the resources from and uh, whether those resources are something that we can continue to enjoy and use for our needs we have divided into these two so first i would like to talk about resources that are based on origin so the word origin means the place from where they are uh, extracted or uh, they are found so that they can be used now when we talk about origin again it can be classified into three different types the first is called or the natural second man made and third is human so when we talk about natural natural resources are those resources which are found in nature in the last class we have talked about how uh, an element remains just an element until and unless it is used uh, to meet human needs whatever exists in nature is useful but until it is used it does not become a resource hence whatever we get from nature is termed as a natural resource a resource that is found from nature so uh, for example we can talk about uh, solar energy we can talk we can talk about water wind plants uh, animals so these are all examples of natural resources then again natural resources are divided into two kinds that is biotic and abiotic resource biotic uh, refers to those resources which originate from life forms such as plants and animals and abiotic the opposite of biotic are those which do not originate from life forms for example solar energy water wind etc etc so we can see in a, in a very simple way understand that the resources that we get from nature uh, are uh, are those that are uh, used by man and then they are utilized to meet the needs and for whatever purpose that it is meant and these are the ones that we get from nature hence they are termed as natural resources the second um, kind of resource depending on origin are the man made resources man made resources as the term indicates are those resources which are produced by men yeah. using his uh, ability his skill and using technology of course so uh, for example we can uh, we can talk about houses machineries cars these are example of man made resources because they are the resources which are utilized by men and produced with the help of technology using the skills that are available to produce these things so we are, we were talking about man made resources man made resources are those resources which are created by human beings using technology using skills but of course the raw materials are taken from nature in making these natural resources are used which brings us 
to the third kind of resource, which is known as human resource. We human beings and you as students, uh, you are in the process of being prepared uh, so that you develop a skill and you attain a, a certain amount of education so that you can be of use to the society. And then when we develop that skill and when we have uh, achieved that level, that level of education which helps us to make that contribution to society for its progress and development, we become what is known as human resource. So, this ability of human beings to satisfy his or her needs as well as the demand of others is termed as human resource. So, these are the three different types of resources on the basis of origin, natural, man-made and human. Then we come to the second group that is renewability. What is the meaning of renewability? That means the ability to replenish the supply once it is used. So, under this category, we have two kinds of resources. One is known as renewable resource and the other is known as non-renewable resource. What is renewable resource? So, uh, those resources which are produced through physical, chemical, or mechanical processes, they are known as renewable resource. Once the supply is over, it can be replenished again. For example, wind, solar energy, or water, okay? uh, it is never exhausted. The supply of wind, the supply of solar energy, supply of water is never exhausted. We continue to enjoy it. So these are examples of renewable resources which are found in nature. We can also take example of plants and animals, life forms. Um, they die, plants die, but the supply never gets exhausted. Animals die, but they continue to live on. And we, pro we are provided with all these resources since time immemorial and we continue to enjoy them. So these are examples of renewable resources. The second category under this renewability are non-renewable resources. And as the name indicates, as the term indicates, these are those resources. Once the supply is finished, the, the, it cannot be renewed again because uh, it takes certain conditions uh, and, uh, and physical processes for this uh, for this to take place or to form. For example, fossil fuels like coal and petroleum. Uh, coal is uh, formed from the remains of uh, plants and trees and petroleum and natural gas are formed from the remains of animals. So, uh, the supply of coal and petroleum will one day be totally exhausted because it takes a lot of time and as I said earlier, it takes certain specific conditions for this to form. And so, this type of resources are known as non-renewable resources. They are not readily replaced. And also, I would like to give some more examples. Not only coal and petroleum, but iron ore, gold, silver. These are different types of minerals, uh, metals, and fossil fuels. So, all of these come under the category of non-renewable resources. So, uh, um, coming to the textbook on page 92, I would like to just read a sentence on the uh, second paragraph, the end of the second paragraph, which says that a systematic and planned mechanism should be developed to extract and use these resources so that they do not get exhausted easily, talking about the non-renewable resource. Because uh, we need, we are using it, we need it, and we also should ensure the future generations also have it. So or even though we need it and we, we need to use it now, we should do it in a systematic way. Because the stock or the supply of these resources uh, are not able to match with the demand because of the growing population and the growing demand for such type of 
resources. They are very limited in their availability and they don't get renewed easily. Therefore, we should check the misuse of these resources and if you have to use them, we have to use them in the right way. So, in, in, in conclusion, what I would like to remind us uh, uh, through this, what we have learned from this chapter is that we should pay necessary attention so that the process of extraction, use of resources and the waste disposal do not degrade the environment around and we are able to ensure a good environment for our future generations. So students, we have come to the end of this chapter. Um, I hope we have understood the brief explanation. And as I have said earlier, I would like you to go to the textbook yourself. I know you have the textbooks with you. In addition to that, I will be uploading some questions uh, uh, along with some extra questions, which I would like you to prepare the answers on and have it ready so that when school reopens, we can go through them together. Also, on page 93, um, question number 12, uh, there's a question. What are the sources of natural resources available in your locality? How have the people used and misused the sources of these resources? Right, how the misuse can be checked. I would like you to um, take this question and uh, find out some information from your own uh, uh, locality or community. Yes, all of you are home now and I think it's the right time to, to uh, find information with regard to this question. Uh, we, this will be treated as a project work for 10 marks. As you know that in geography, you have uh, 10 marks allotted, allotted for a project. So I would like you to do this also uh, during this time of a lockdown as you are staying in your home, page 93. So once again, I wish you all the best and in the next class, we will be going to the next chapter, that is chapter 6, Economic Activities or Occupation. Thank you. Stay home, stay safe. Do it for self. Do it for your family. Do it for India. Let's break the chain of COVID-19. Hum hoge kamyab jai hain. Hum hoge kamyab jai hain. Hum hoge kamyab jai hain.